Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today we're gonna to talk about some super important things that you need to get stuck into before you even start to think about approaching sweet picking on the guitar. So I've taught a stack of players, particularly metal players, how to sweet pick. Sweet picking is a technique that tends to break people down. I've seen people have all sorts of trouble with learning it. And if you wanna deep dive into the more technical side and the speed building side around sweet picking, I have two videos on my channel that you can check out. So make sure you add them to your playlist as these will help you on your sweet picking journey. The first video is the five biggest mistakes that people make with sweet picking. The second video is the secret to unlocking speed with sweet picking on the guitar. Now for most metal players, when they start learning sweet picking, they understand the basic fundamentals of the mechanics of sweet picking, which are quite simple. Which is essentially, if we are traveling downwards, we're using downstrokes. And if we're traveling upwards, we're using upstrokes. And we keep this direction across strings and do it in quick succession to build an arpeggio and get something like this. <laughs> Now how most people learn sweet picking is they will find a couple of songs from say maybe a metalcore band in the early 2000s, a death metal band from earlier or current, um, and they will look at what a great player is doing and find these little patterns that these players are using. Now the common ones I see are three string patterns like this, or this, or big five string patterns like this. And this is usually the extent of most people's knowledge with sweep picking, is maybe a couple of shapes and a little bit of the mechanics, and that's it. But I'm here to stress that this is not enough to be an accomplished sweep picker. So as I say to my students, if you wanna be great at the guitar, it's all well and good having a Lamborghini. We all wanna go fast. But there's no point having a Lamborghini if we have a dirt road. You have to focus on your foundations. And that is what today's lesson is about. So today we're going to have an in-depth study on the five positions of the minor triads across the guitar. We are going to learn what is a triad and an arpeggio. Number two, where are they located on the guitar? Number three, how do we build a system to study them completely so that we have mastery over them over the entire neck? and then the confidence that comes from that. The goal of this lesson is to set you up with a foundation so that you can study sweet picking and you can become an accomplished sweet picking player and even get creative with sweet picking and create your own licks and riffs. And when you are studying solos and other players, you'll recognize the shapes and the patterns that they are using, where they come from and the decisions that these players have made on the guitar. And then when you get stuck into the mechanical and the technical side, it will unlock way faster. So let's get stuck into it. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what is a triad and where it comes from and learn a little bit of music theory here. So to do this, we need to talk about intervals and understand what intervals are. So the first thing we need to do is take the major scale. Let's play in A. So if we play a major scale from this note A, we have seven notes in succession and they sound like this. <laughs> land back on an A here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're back to the root note of A. And our notes are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and then back to A. Now what are intervals? So intervals are basically a numbering system that simplifies music theory so that we don't have to talk about the notes. We only talk about the numbers and the numbers identify the relationship between the notes or the distance between the notes. So if I play my major scale again, we simply number the notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one. It's really that simple for intervals. Now let's answer the question, what is a triad? So a triad takes a couple of these notes out of the scale and puts them together. These notes are the one, so our A, the three, the C sharp, the fifth, which is an E, and then back to the one again. And you'll hear this very familiar sound, which is an arpeggio. And if we break these notes up and play them, we get an arpeggio. If we stack them together, 
we get a chord. Now this whole concept that I've just been through applies to the minor scale too, which is more relevant for us metal players. So if we play the A minor scale, we have these seven notes in succession. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then back to A. Now what we have done to achieve the minor scale is actually manipulate the major scale. We've made three manipulations to it and we've changed some of the intervals. So we've taken the third from the major scale and we've flattened it by one note. So we get this. We've also taken the six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've flattened it in the minor scale. So one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six. And we've also taken the seven out of the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've flattened it in the minor scale. So we get a, a flat seven. So one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. And then we have our one again. So this gives us the notes that make up the minor scale. And this is why intervals are important because if we understand the intervals, we can manipulate them. And this is where the creativity can really come alive. We can get exotic scales out of this. We can get cool advanced exotic chords or jazz chords. And you can start to experiment and tinker with what's going on with the music side of things. Now, if we go back to our minor scale here, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, we can take the same intervals out to build a triad. So the one, the third, or in the minor scale, the flat three and the five will give us our arpeggios and our chords or our triads. So we get one, flat three, five, one. This becomes our minor arpeggio. And if we stack those notes together, we get a minor chord. Excellent, so a quick recap from this first section. A minor triad has a one, a flat three, and a five. A major triad has a one, a three, and a five in it. Now here is where the real work begins because we've just studied a small segment of the fretboard here and seen where our arpeggios and our chords are. But obviously we have a lot more real estate to travel to be an accomplished guitarist. So how do we start to tackle this? At first, this can feel very overwhelming, which is why we need a system and a structure to tackle this. And in your playing journey, you actually need multiple systems to go through to fully immerse yourself in the knowledge of the guitar and build your relationship with the notes. So that under pressure of playing, performing, improvisation or writing, you can use these skills wherever you want and create. So today we're going to borrow from the cage system. To, in short, the cage system takes our main cowboy chords, a C, an A, a G, an E, and a D. And it moves them up the neck to find the same chord using those different shapes in different positions up and down the neck. So firstly, let's start with A major. So we have our open A chord here. If we wanna find our next major, we have to take a G shape, but we have to play it like this as if our first finger was barring here across the nut or acting like a little capo, and then slide it up here to the fifth position. So we have the fifth fret on the sixth string, the fourth fret on the fifth string. We're barring the second fret on the, the fourth and the third string, and the second string. And then we have our pinky up on this top A here, and we get this beautiful chord. Now our next position is a root six E shape. So, we take our E chord like this and pretend we're barring back behind the nut here, shift it up to the fifth position. We get an A major chord here. Our next one is taking the D shape, but we would play it like this and pretend we've got our first finger back behind the nut and shift that up to the seventh fret. And we get an A major chord here. And our next one, we would take a C major shape 
and we slide that up to the A here on the fifth string and then we just bar across that ninth fret behind it and we get this. And then finally we have the A shape again but we have the octave of it. So what I like to do with this one is bar as if uh, we were behind the nut here, slide that up to the 12th fret and we get the octave. Like this. So you hear all of these chords sound like the same chord but a slightly different variation on them or a different voicing. So we have our open A, we have our G shape of A, we have our E shape, we have our D shape, then we have our C shape, and then we're back to our E shape, uh, sorry, A shape. And then we can obviously keep traveling up the neck, neck, but we start to run out of room here in terms of getting all of our fingers in. All right, so it gets pretty yucky and pretty messy. So this gives us a system where we can actually quickly identify and map out all of our triads across the neck as chords. So, A, 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 A. Now, why is this important? Because these chord shapes actually form the building blocks of our arpeggios across the neck. So this is the first thing that you need to study. You need to be really well versed in your chords using the cage system for your majors. The next section, what we're going to do is look at our chords for our minors, which are a little trickier because we have to flatten the third. So remember from our music theory in the first section where we spoke about intervals, the minor triad, arpeggio and scale has a minor third in it or a flat third. So what we do is we take this A major and our third is here, it is the C sharp. So the note on the B string. So, simply, we move it down to the C and we get this, an A minor chord, which we all know. Now, if we take our G shape, our C sharp is here on the fifth string, so this gets difficult because we technically need to move it back. But we have a C sharp up here as well. So this is where we run into some problems with the cage system because we can't play the full voicings when we're using the minor chords like we can the major chords. So most of the time you will see it like this. So it'll be fifth fret on the bottom string, third fret on the fifth string, and then barring the second frets on the D and G. Our next shape is the E shape. So we take the third, the C sharp is here on the G string and we just lift it off so that our first finger is barring and we get a minor chord here. Up here, our C sharp is up here on the first string on the ninth fret. So we need to move that down one fret. So we've got to swap our fingers. So what we do is we bring that third finger down to where our second finger was. And then we put this second finger on the eighth fret of the top string on the C. And we get this. Now, my favorite one, not, is the C shape. So with this one, our C sharp is here on the D string. We need to move that down one fret. And this is super difficult because then we get this yucky shape. Okay, so obviously a big stretch and this one is painful and you won't see this shape very often because it's not very accessible. Then our last shape is taking the octave of that A shape. And then our C sharp is here on the B string. We need to move it down. So we get a root five bar chord here, or an A shape of the minor. So now putting these together, we have A minor, A minor, A minor, again. Then this one, the yuck, and then this. This gives us our cage system for our minor arpeggio. Okay, so now you should have a pretty good understanding of where our cage system comes in handy and where we actually get our arpeggios from. So now what we want to do is uh, take this concept and apply it to a more useful key for us metal players. Say E minor or D minor are usually the big keys that we play in as metal players. A minor still sometimes. And then what we want to do is use those caged chords to build our arpeggios out. So the first thing we need to do is look at our E minor shapes. So the first one is here, the open E minor. We have our D shape next, which is here. Then we move into our C shape, which is here. 
okay yucky one then we have our a shape here then we have our g shape here and then we're back to our e shape here so this gives us our shapes all across the board so that we can travel up and down and obviously you can continue those up the neck to the 24th fret or 22nd fret depending how many frets your guitar has but it's not going to be very comfortable obviously now the next thing we need to do is then add in a couple of notes to complete our triads to turn them into full arpeggios so if we take this open position of e we have most of them there but we're missing a third down the bottom because we have to go in order when we are playing an arpeggio we need to go one the third and then the fifth in the minor case the one the flat three and then the fifth so E, G, and then B. And then we're going to continue. So E, G, B, E, G. We get this. Which follows that chord. Now, to start with with this, before you start sweet picking, I recommend you alternate pick these shapes and get comfortable on the left hand side. Then go and watch my video, the five biggest mistakes that metal players make with sweet picking and my speed building video for sweet picking to work on the technical side. Now let's study our next position. So our next one is this shape of E minor. So we have our first here, but we're missing our third, which we need to add here. Okay, so the fifth fret on the fourth string. So we go E. So we go E, G. We're up to B. And then we're going to continue these notes. E, G. And then we're going to add some ones down the bottom. So from this E, we're going to go down to a B here. And then a G down here. So we get. position so that's our D shape centered around that one let's move to our next one so our next one is this god awful C shape this one so what we're gonna do here we have our E our first our third is here we're gonna move to our fifth here then come back to our first our G our third and then our B our fifth we're gonna add this one up the top here we're going to add these two notes on the bottom string. So we get this one. This is one of the famous metal shapes. Yeah, this. Okay. Now let's move to our A shape. So our A shape, we're missing the third down the bottom. We need to add this. So we get one, three, five, one, three, five, one. We add the one up the top too. And then coming down, we can add our B down the bottom and then come back home to our first. So, there's another very famous metal one that's used quite a lot. Now, we're going to move to our G shape next. So this one has everything in place for us except the top strings. So we're going to go one, our flat three, our five, back to our one, then our flat three on the G, so the 12th fret here. And then five and then one. So we've got a difficult pinky roll here. We get this. And finally, we're gonna finish on our root six bar chord, our E shape. So again, like the bottom, we add our third on the bottom string and the top string, so. Okay, so now we should have all of our shapes all over the board. Okay, so now we will have our shapes over the entire fretboard. from the open position right up to the 24th fret there using E minor arpeggios.
Okay guys, so how did you go? You should now have a very comprehensive knowledge of how to use the cage system to build your triads and then build your arpeggios in a key like E minor. So of course you can transpose this to other keys and you can do the same process using your major arpeggios and triads. Now the first thing to do is just to learn these positions all over the board and build them out like I did across the neck, up and down using alternate picking. Then when you're comfortable, you can start to introduce sweet picking to the mix but I highly recommend that you go and watch my video, the five biggest mistakes that metal players make with sweet picking and then continue your sweet picking journey with me.